Welcome back to 100 Days of Making Comics, and this is day 12. And what I'm doing right now, I'm putting in these gray washes on these characters here. Now, I'm not a master at this. I'm actually a beginner. This is new for me. This is a new skill for me to be able to do this. And um, so it's something that I'm working at. So if this is something that you're interested in learning, I would not recommend learning from watching my videos here. I would highly recommend that you find somebody else that is a master, that does this very well, that could look at your work, that could critique your work, that could give you feedback and make sure that you're on the right path, moving in the right direction with what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. My teacher, um, I will send him this when I'm done and he will go over it with me in detail critique it quite a bit tell me what's working what's not working and as an artist that's important too if you a lot of artists they just show their work to their friends and family and if that's all you do if you just show your work to your friends and family only you're going to end up with a kind of a, a skewed point of view as to how good you are and what your abilities are you'll start thinking you're a lot better than you really are in my opinion because you're always going to be hearing like oh that's amazing that's great that's incredible and uh, so it's important that you show your work to other artists that, and not just anyone, because there's some artists out there that are like, you know, I'll show this kid how bad he is. And they'll just, you know, they'll just rip your artwork, a new one, and totally just tear it apart. And, and that's not really helpful either. You need somebody that can look at it and show, tell you, look, this, this is not working and this is why. And here's how, what you need to do to fix it or to make it better next time. You know, stuff like that, that's going to be helpful. That's what my teacher does with me. He gives me really good, really helpful critique and help helps helpful feedback. As you can see up here, I have my, my uh, reference photographs that I did these drawings, based these drawings on, and I'm basing these tones on these. Now, the light source on these photos up here is not very good, actually. So I am going to be kind of pushing things and changing it a bit on my own to make it a little different, try to make it a little bit more a little bit more of a light source on this. But I think it is important, especially when you're learning how to do something, that you look at real things. So like you want to learn how to paint something, you need to look at the real thing that you're painting and see what it looks like and how it works and how it's put together and things like that. So if you're trying to become a master portrait painter, you've got to look at people's faces and study them, you know, in real life, not just out of your head or out of your imagination. And so that's important. I think that's important. Some people will be like, oh, you're cheating. You're looking at a photograph while you do that. And um, yes, I am. I want to get better. And that's important to do if you want to improve. Um, so that's basically it. I probably running out of things to talk about. I'm not too good at keeping a conversation going, actually. Um, I have not yet mastered the art of conversation, but I'm probably more of an anti-social path. At least I used to be an anti-social path, less so now. Um, but I will tell you what I usually do while I do this is I listen to a lot of audiobooks on cassette uh, not on cassette on on cassette what what decade am i in right now when i was a, when i was younger i listened to a lot of audiobooks on cassette nowadays i listen to them on a computer i just finished listening to charles schultz's biography it's the really thick like definitive supposed to be the definitive biography or whatever on charles schultz schultz's life um it's the one with the peanuts like Charlie Brown shirt as the cover. Um, it was pretty long. It's pretty hefty. I listened to that book. I did, I, was, I did not think it was very good, actually. I thought that the book spent a lot of time. Charles Schultz, if you don't know, is the guy that did the comic strip, The Peanuts. Snoopy, Charlie Brown, all that stuff. And he did an amazing body of work in his lifetime. I mean, he... He did well over a thousand strips. He drew the strip for over 10 years. He had 
you know, there was, he wrote a lot of the, he wrote like the Christmas special and a lot of the holiday specials and stuff that were made. And, uh, and he was also considered one of like the first real minimalists as far as his comic strip goes and his cartooning goes. And so I was interested. I've always been a fan of his work. And I thought that the, the biography really didn't give a very good idea of like who he was or what he was like. They spent a lot of time when Schultz was 48, about 48 or 49, like, like late 40s, he had an affair and and his marriage ended shortly after that. Um, and the book spent a lot of time, I felt like, on that part of his life. Probably because, you know, that's the juicy stuff. And I wasn't really, I'm, I wasn't interested in that. You know, uh, that's not why I wanted to read the book. And when you got so much of the book about that stuff, I, it, I just got sick of it after a while. It wasn't that great. Um... But I'm listening to another autobiography right now about a, an artist named Al Cap. He did. A, he was an artist in the early 1900s. He he produced a body of work similar uh, in volume, actually, to that of Charles Schultz. I mean, literally, he he completed thousands of strips in his lifetime. And Cap. Um, he's most well known probably for doing a strip called Little Abner, and. He actually is interesting. He only had one leg. His leg was amputated when he was a child. He was like run over by a train or hit by a train or something. And they, the doctors cut his leg off. And he had like a wooden leg his whole life. Uh, at least as far as I know so far. I haven't gotten through the end of it. I don't remember when he died. I think it was in the 60s that he passed away. I think most of his work was done in the 30s and 40s. I don't remember. I'm still in the beginning of this this guy's life, but I'm very interested to go through now once I'm done listening to about him to go back and find his work and read it all. I've been doing that with Charles Schultz too. I've been reading a lot of the old peanut strips. You can get them um Fanographics, which is like a publishing company. They put out uh all the peanuts in the order that they came out. And you can read them in the order that they were published, starting in the 1950s all the way till his passing. Uh, I think Charles Schultz passed away in 1999 or 2000. I think he drew his last strip in 1999, maybe. But when Schultz passed away, it's pretty crazy that uh, that the last strip that he ever drew, the last peanut strip to be published, came out the day after Schultz died which is which is wild um yeah so that's basically it i'm just tr trying to think of things to talk about here because i'd imagine that just watching me do this has got to be pretty boring after a while um so anyway i'll let you go now I don't really have much more to say at this point or that I really want to say at this point. So that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to finish these up and I will post them all on my blog, samcrescent.com. I will put the link to where these are posted in the description of this video so that if you would like to, you could go and you could check them out and you could see what I did and I'll be back tomorrow with another installment of 100 days of making comics and uh, if you like watching me draw like this let me know and maybe I'll do some more drawing videos um, and so that's it I'm going to end this video very soon now so I'll let you just hang out for a few more minutes while I work on these guys a little more and then I want to get rid of that hard line there and then I will end the video for today basically 
you can see my light source is like dark in the front, lighter in the back. And if you look at the hair here, it's dark. And then where the hair goes close to the skin, it gets lighter. I haven't pulled that off yet very well, but I'll put another, I don't want to make it too dark here, but I'll probably put another tone on this guy's head. It'll bring a little more contrast into it and try to, try to get that effect. So this is still wet, so I'm, I may need to let this dry some more because I'm painting into wet. 